But James, I'll really quick, I want your take on Tesla over the last week. Um, Tesla dropping down to almost a, a low for the year. And then what a rebound. What's your take on Tesla and robotics and AI and FS, the self-driving software and everything? What's your take? Well, they had a pretty... They had a pretty impressive earnings call. So if you're a technologist or if you're a futurist, you're going to love to listen to their earnings call. He came out and once again pushed hard on the full self-driving, the robo-taxis. It's different hearing it on CNBC where you'll hear the commentators say, oh, Elon Musk wants to make everyone's car into a robo-taxi. And they make it sound ridiculous when you hear most commentators talk about it. But then when you hear Elon say it, he actually convinces you. He says, essentially, your car will be able to go out and work for you when you're not driving it. Most auto owners don't use their vehicle X percentage of the time. I think it was a large percentage, like 60, 70 percent of the time they're not using their vehicle. Even when you don't want it to be out driving other people around for pay, you can actually use the GPU in your car because they have more and more powerful GPUs. You can connect your GPU to like a global cloud and provide GPU inferencing to the world and receive pay for that. So he, he, essentially he's making it into something much more than a car company. And it's not just the Teslas and their GPU and the robo-taxi potential. It's also the humanoid robot that he said they're gonna hopefully make for sale at the end of next year. Like I said, though, I didn't get a lot of promise out of the cheaper models thing. It's He didn't really say that they're going to come up with a Model 2. is more of a, hey, we may bring prices down on models. It was vague, and an analyst tried to get him in a corner, and he really wouldn't say whether or not there's going to be a new model. So that was a little sketch. So what I'm hearing you saying is basically either market sentiment or as a future investment, because on EPS and just sheer, the numbers were horrible. I mean, they sucked. But obviously, there was some guidance there. And um, is the market sentiment right now worth the jump in Tesla? I mean, it was down to almost, what, below 150 a share. And now we're almost to the 200 level. It's that psychological potential resistance area. Is it, was it, worth, the, is it worth the jump? Yeah, I think we're at a point in the market where sentiment really depends on your specific stock. The market as a whole obviously can continue to bring your stock up or down. But we're at a point where when you see Tesla moving up like this, despite so many downgrades, you know things are a little bit more stock specific right now. And indeed, during earnings, things are going up or down based on whether or not your stock delivers the earnings that the street wants. So, yeah, I, I, I do like Tesla. I liked it. So we, we first recorded this episode on Sunday, had some technical difficulties and couldn't publish it. But on Sunday, I said, yeah, it's a buy. I mean, I literally said that in the recording. And then the next day it shot up, I think, 13, 14 percent. But today it's down a bit. It's pulling back five percent today so far. But I, I'm trying to get you to, to tell the viewers too what changed your mind, because about a month or two ago, I remember remember you uh, giving me the old schoolyard making fun of me. Because even even the first episode when I had my Tesla sweatshirt on after the episode, you attempted to make fun of my uh, glorious wardrobe attire because you were not a, you were not a, uh, I wouldn't say believer, but you were not an investor in Tesla at that time. And I was, but, um, so what's changed? That's a good question. I think, I think, well, there are a few things. What changed for me is that I saw, I mean, this was actually a post on, on Twitter. I'll show it. I'll pull it up for our viewers. I'll put it in the, the video, but essentially there's a guy from investor business daily who said, GM and Ford beating Tesla at their own game. And then I went and looked at the actual numbers and Ford is currently losing $132,000 for every electric vehicle they make. Rivian is losing 43,000 for every electric vehicle they make. Tesla is actually making $16,000 for every electric vehicle they sell. So I wouldn't say if, I don't know what their own game is, but essentially, Tesla is the only company in North America, maybe even in the world, that's making money off of EVs. Chinese companies might be subsidized by the Chinese government. So I, I just think that Wall Street has been a little too harsh on Tesla. It's still a young company, and it's 
it's a technologically dynamic company. So they are a disruptive tech company, not a car company, but Wall Street values it as a car company. And that's what that's the first thing that Elon said in the call. It's like, hey, you can't value us as a car company. And I agree with him. He's right. Um, I get a lot of comments on my on my Tesla. Yeah, they got to make it about stuff. the culture, you know, build build a culture of fanboys for your company. And maybe that helps. The st- I mean, Tesla stock, Tesla, Tesla stock is like a meme stock almost. It's like a cultural icon, you know? Well, I mean, part of one of the things that uh, p- investors should look at, okay, getting back to that on earnings calls and um, especially the CEO letters to the company is culture and how much that CEO or the leadership of the company puts in regards to their their business and regards to the culture they're creating. And uh, Elon is obviously trimming a lot of fat. Um, 10%, and I, I, you know. 10% headcount reduction and a lot of executives have left. So some people are concerned because I've just seen so many top level people are leaving like the head of powertrain. I mean, cars need a good powertrain, right? Well, the head of powertrain just left. So a lot of people, even the dude, even the CIO or whoever it was like the, the, the financial person on the call at the end of the call, the financial person was like, well, that wraps up our call. You know, Elon, it's been really nice working with you for all these 16 years. Um, I really enjoyed my time here. And Elon's like, yeah, yeah, it was good to have you. I honestly feel like Elon probably gave an ultimatum. He was probably like, hey, you know, we're cutting 10% of entry-level workers. And for you executives, you need to take a pay cut or leave. I mean, this is just my speculation. There's no fact based on this, but so many executives have left. I feel like he said something. Or it might be the shares because he wants to change the shares so he owns more of the company. Something is going on at Tesla. <laughs>